All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the angle bisector theorem. So this is the one we started to look at in class. We didn't have a ton of time to kind of really unpack this. So let's take a quick look at what this says. What we've got here is triangle ABC and CD is the angle bisector. So right off the bat we know angle 1 and 2 are congruent. And when it does that, the angle bisector kind of splits this triangle up into some proportional segments. We're not going to discuss the proof of why this works here in this video. We'll try and take a look at that in class, but for now, let's take a look at what is going to happen. Let's see what this angle bisector does. What we can see here is that the angle bisector is going to take this side, and AB, and split it into two segments, AD and DB. And it's also going to be kind of used in conjunction with sides AC and CB. And the proportion that we can ultimately end up writing when we take a look at this is that we know that AD, which is the first highlighted segment we talked about here, over AC, which is kind of the side that it matches up with here on the left, that's in the same ratio as if we were to look at DB, which is the other side of AB that they get split up into, over the side CB, which is the side of the original triangle that the segment's adjacent to. And again, we saw this in our last proportion we were able to write. We could, in theory, split this up and kind of swap those two um, segments that are in the mean position and write another proportion. We could write AD over DB is equal to AC over CB. Equivalent proportions, it just kind of changes the meaning here. Uh, and the second proportion, AD to DB, means we're kind of comparing the left side of AB to the right side of AB. And then AC over CB is referring to kind of the left segment of the angle and the right segment. So either one of these works, and it'll kind of depend on which one we want to use, will be determined by the information that we're given, what might make it easier for us to work with. So let's look at some examples that are going to use these two proportions. So here we've got triangle XYZ. It's, the problem tells us that XY is equal to 3, YZ is equal to 5. And then it goes and says, if YW bisects angle XYZ and XW is 2, what is the length of XZ? So it's asking for the entire length of that side. So let's call that X. And let's try and set up a proportion here. Taking a look at our angle bisector theorem, we should be able to write the proportion that xw over xy is equal to wz over yz. When we plug in what we know, we would know that xw is 2, xy is 3, wz we don't know, but we could write an expression for it. If this whole length from x to z is x, and xw is 2, this remaining segment must have the length of x minus 2. So we can put that in for x, or excuse me, for wz. And then yz we know is just 5. Now we can use our means extremes theorem to cross multiply, add 6 to both sides. So 3x is equal to 16, x equals 16 thirds. There's our angle bisector theorem. Let's take one more quick example here. We'll do one more. Same diagram, just a little different given information. Here it says that xy is 3, yz is 4, xz, so the entire side here is 5. And again, if yw is the angle bisector, we're going to try and find the lengths of both xw and wz. So in this particular case, we're going to kind of have to get a little um, creative in the way that we label our lengths here. 
Again, we'll start with the proportion. We know that xw over yx should be equal in ratio to wz over yz. Let's start substituting in the values we know. We know that xw, well, we don't know what xw is. Why don't we call that y? Okay, yx, we do know that's 3. Wz, again, we don't know it, but if we look back over to our diagram, we should be able to write an expression for it. If the whole length from x to z is 5, then x to w is y, this should be 5 minus y. So we can put that into our proportion, and y over z is 4. And again, we, let's solve for y. So cross multiply for y is equal to 15 minus 3y. We can add 3y to both sides. So we know that 7y is equal to 15, or y is equal to 15 over 7. Now remember, we defined that y is the same as the length of xw, so we've answered half the question. But we still need to figure out what wz is. Now, good thing we defined earlier that wz is 5 minus y. So wz is just 5 minus 15 over 7. And when we do that, we should end up with the fraction uh, 20 over 7 as our final result. Just need a common denominator. And that again, that was the length of wz. So there's two examples on how to use the angle bisector theorem to set up a proportion and solve it for the missing lengths of a triangle.